Okay, so uh, we're in the Mimer uh, that was said by the previous Rebbe in America in 1940, shortly after he arrived. Chaviv Adam Shinivra B'Tselem. We're at the second paragraph of the Mimer. And the last idea that he explained and how it's related to the, the Mimer is that when the Mishnah says, it's a Mishnah in Pirkei Ovis, Chaviv Adam Shinivra B'Tselem. Beloved is man who was created in the image. And after that it says, Extra special love is known to him that, that was created in the image. Seemingly it's superfluous, it's repetitious. The Rebbe explains, no it's not. One refers to man in general, Adam in general, and one refers to Israel, the Jew. And once he mentions Adam, once he mentions man, he then go, explains the whole idea of a name. And as we'll see in today's chapter, that will begin, how the flow continues. And uh, what he said yesterday is that there are four versions to a person's name. The Shem HaEtzem, the Shem HaTohar, the shame HaPa'ula, and the shame HaKinui. The essential name, the, the name of the person, that is the person, that is the mode, the vessel, the instrument that draws the vitality of godliness into the person. And as I mentioned yesterday, the importance of calling someone by their Jewish name, because that brings life to them in all situations, and therefore it's important to use the name. Parenthetically, I remind myself, a friend who already passed on, may have a uh, illuminated the paradise, Gan he, uh, he he stopped the Rebbe once and he said, my sister doesn't have a Jewish name. And the Rebbe turned to him and the Rebbe said, what's your sister's name? How is she called now? Karen. The Rebbe turned back to him, so let her be called, what? Let her be called Karen. What? Yeah, Karen is a or. I'm just telling you, a Maisa Shahoya, this is in Brooklyn in the 1980s. You know, it's not Eretz Yisrael. And the Rebbe, right on the spot, said, let her be called Karen. The idea of a Jewish name is a very, very important thing. And it has an impact in a person's life, present, past, present, and the future. Anyway, so that's called Shem HaTohar. The next thing is shame. I'm sorry, that's called shame ha'etzem. The next thing is shame ha'tohar. Torah means like an image. What do you mean? What does that mean? In other words, uh, is the person a, a a large person, a small person, a description? Okay, let's use a better word, a descriptive name. It's not the actual name of the person, but it's a description of the person. Then comes point number three: the shame. Ha, um, shame hapaula, shame hapaula is what does the person do? Are they a doctor? Are they a lawyer? Are they a taxi driver? Are they a rabbi? Are they a, 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 a rebbe? What do they do? That's shame hataya, a shame ha, shame hapaula. And finally, the fourth is shame hakinu, a nickname. And I, I mentioned yesterday in the old country, people were called. You know, no, I'm sorry. People in the old country were called by the, the you know, field that they're in. Let's say, uh, you only mentioned Rabbi Yechonah Sandler, right? He was a, a, a shoemaker. So it's called Rabbi Yechonah Sandler. So would that be shame hakinui or shame a nickname? Would that be considered a nickname or would that be shame hapaula, a name after his activity? I would think you could say that's called Sheim HaPa'ula, not Sheim HaKinui. But Sheim HaKinui is, I mentioned that the previous Rebbe in the letter that he wrote a year after he was liberated, in 1928, he based Thomas, he wrote, a, he was right incarcerated in 1927, he was miraculously, and you based Thomas, he was miraculously saved, his life was spared, and he was let go. And uh, what, what, what was the, um, the year later, he wrote a letter, he wrote a letter, I'm teaching now. He wrote a letter, and in the letter, 
In the letter, he 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 he, he writes that the letter is written to Kol Hashem Yisrael Yisroel Yechuna. The letter is written to every single Jew, regardless of who the Jew is. It's written to them. Um, it's written to them as long as they are called a Jew. That's Shem Akinui. It's not their name. It's not their description. It's not their. It's not their activity. Ish Yehudi. I'm not focusing on the Yehu, on the Ish part now. Is sir. we're talking about the Yehudi part? Ish Yehudi. Who are you, Yehudi? Yehudi. Shem Akinui. Now let's go to chapter two and see how he continues. Vehinei Isa bezayar. It says in Zoyar, the Ba'ar B'Shemes Nikro Min Hamadaber. The Holy Zoyar, the Zoyar Hakadosh says that there are four different synonyms to a to to the to the to to man to a human being. How we say how we call it in the Hebrew: Adam, Adam, Ish, man, Gever, man, Enosh, man. It's four different words to the same idea. Well, at least it seems that way. The Adam comes along, Chassidus, and says that they aren't four exact same. They, in Hebrew, they all refer to a human being, but they really imply something different about the about a person, a different aspect of a person. The Adam who lemaila mikulam. Adam, the name Adam is above all the others. The last name, the Enosh, the name for a human being that's called Enosh, Lemata Makulam, is below all the others. With this we can understand that the angels they complained to Hashem and they said, Why are you creating men? What did they say, sir? What is man that you remember him? Stop. They say to Hashem, what, what do you need these human beings? They're a waste. <laughs> Why do you bring them to, the, to your mind? So this is the end of the, of the phrase. Right? Avram, do you recall when we say this phrase? Uh, Isser? It's a pusk in Tehillim. Correct. And when do we say it? I'm testing your memory, Isser. You said you had a great memory. I don't have a good memory. I said I don't. I'm being sarcastic. Go ahead. Anyway. Be it's no, it's uh, it's one of the ten verses on Rosh Hashanah in the Musaf. We say ten verses of Zichrainis, right? Ten verses of Malchiyos, ten verses of Shifrais, ten verses of Zichrainis. One of the verses is this verse: Mo Enish Kisiskidenu. Because no, we we choose verses where Hashem is identified with Zikaron, with memory. Okay. The Karo B'Shem Enosh. This the Rebbe is saying. The previous Rebbe is now. And in this verse in Tehillim, man is called Enosh. Lohoiros al al ha koytin v'shiflus hamohus to denote his disgracefulness or his low. Um, essence, meaning to say, this is man as man is not in a favorable way. This is the worst of man. When you use the word enosh, you're identifying with the worst aspect of, of man when a man behaves that way. And and what are we saying to Hashem? He doesn't say it here, but on, on Rosh Hashanah and in, in Musaf, we're saying Hashem Remember this man too, because you created this man. So if you didn't want to make such a man, don't create him. And if you did create him, remember him for the good. Okay? But that's 
But the word Enosh, the, the previous Rebbe, it brings this verse to teach us that the word Enosh, which means human being, refers to the lowest <coughs> aspect of man. And Adam, the first of the four names, refers to the highest aspect of man. And it says, Kishem Enosh Meira Alachalishus. Because the word, the name Enosh denotes weakness, chalash, weakness. Ukamesh Kosov says, Okev Halev Mikoil Ve Enosh Hu. The heart is like twisted of everything and and he's and, and he's weak the enoshu so in that verse clearly the word the enosh implies weakness the pirush enosh what is the meaning of enosh halosh weak vagam dirsivu ben adam kisif kidenu this is a rhetorical question of Ram. He quotes now another verse, Uven Adam, which means son of man, which means man, the human being. Who is man, Kisif Kedeno, that I should remember him? Wait a minute. What's the implication of this verse? That man is worthless. What's so, you know, man is not special. And what's the word used here? Not Enosh, but Adam. And, I, and, and the Rebbe is asking on himself, I thought we just said that Adam is the highest form of man, the best form of man. And if that's the case, what's the question, Kisif Kedeno? Hare maskirim gam shem Adam. You follow the question or not? I don't know if the change in location has interrupted your Wi-Fi. Or right, I, 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 there's nothing I could do, but I could have say, I'll say it over again. The question from the verse of Ven Adam Kiskif Kedenu is because the, the implication is that even Adam, which is supposed to be the highest form of that man, is worthless. And that's why the question is, why should I remember him? So the Rebbe is asking a rhetorical question on himself. I just told you that Adam is the highest and Adam would be a virtue. And if Adam is a virtue, that's why it's worth mentioning. And the, and the first it question is, why do we mention Adam? Seemingly, Adam and Anish are the same. Low lives. <laughs> Hare, here comes the, re the retort to this rhetorical question. Hare maskirim gam shem adam bezilzul v'shiflus. The Rebbe's answer is, there are times when the word adam is also referred to when we're talking about someone who is disgraceful and embarrassing. In other words, overall, it's true that adam is, when you're comparing all four to each other, adam is the highest, the best. But if sometimes when you're not making that comparison and you use the word Adam in a verse and it's on its own and the situation is a, a, not a good situation, whatever, whatever context of the verse is, Adam is also used for disgrace. That's, that's his response. No, it's, it's not a contradiction to what the four names are. You would think that you have to always, that any time the word Adam is mentioned in Tanakh, it refers to just a great situation. The Rebbe says, no. The Pasik, Adam, Kisif Kidenu, implies otherwise. Uh, Avram, can you turn off your, your or, or, or Issa, your, I, I hear background noise. Mute yourself, please. Of the Enoish, La Hashem, the Adam. Nevertheless, the name Enoish is not comparable to the name Adam. The shame Adam, who shame Amayla, who shame Enish, who shame Ashifus. The name Adam is a name of quality, and the name Enoish is a name of disgracefulness. So, in other words, the Rebbe stands by his position that overall this is a truism. 
Adam in comparison to Enosh. Adam is virtuous, Mala, it's a shame of Mila, and Enosh is shame of Shiflus, is a name denoting disgracefulness. Are you guys uh, hearing me or, 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 or not because the computer is, free, is freezing up every two minutes? Put on, put on your mic. I want to hear you. Yes, sir. It's not yeah, coming. Yeah, you, you were frozen for... I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. Okay. It refers to the term from Adam to Enosh. Um, uh, the shame Enosh, who shem shifo samash chazot in Adam tifkadenu. So that's where you dropped off. Right, uh, and then, um, the shame of the shame of my love, the shame of the shame of shiflus that you, you got? Yeah. Okay, that's where we're at. Umasha kosu vein odin kisif kidenu. Regarding the verse where it says, and what is man? What is man worth? That he should be remembered who... As Tosus makes the difference. In tracted Avodazara Dafki, Mulamadal of page 3, folio 1, Ben Adam, Ben Adam, Oi Bnei Adam. The other Mushema Maila, Mushem Yisrael, Kamesh Kos of Adam Atem, Atem Kruyim Adam. Tysus himself makes that difference, and he says there is Ben Adam, and there is Bnei Adam. Ben means the son of man. Bnei Adam means the children of man. Plural. The Adam was Shem Amayla. Adam is a virtuous name. For who Shem Yisrael? And this is the name Yisrael. The name of a Jew is called, that's called Israel. Kamashikosov. Atem, Adam, Adam, Atem, Atem, Kriyam, Adam. The verse says, you are Adam, you are man. So, so it's explained, Atem, Kriyam, Adam. You Jews are given the title Adam, and not the other people, not the other nations. However, this is all from Tesis, I believe. Ven Adam when it comes to the wording in Tanakh, where it says, Son of Man, Ben Adam, Hakavana, B'nai Adam Harishon, that's a reference to the children of Adam, the first man, the B'shem, B'nai Adam Nichlo, Kol Mini Amadaber, that's a reference not only to Jews, but that's a reference to all of the speaking species, all humans, non-Jews as well. More specifically, the four names that the human species is given. There are two divisions. We're going to take now what we learned earlier, the essential name and the descriptive name, and put them into one category. And the other two, the, the, the uh, activity name, and the nickname into another category. Of Arba Shemus Elu and these four names Adam Ish Gever Enoish in Ishnea Shemus Adam Ish Heim Shemus Atzmian. These two names are essential names. Vishnea Shemus Gever Enoish and the two names of Gever and Enoish Heim Tayarim. They are descriptions. They're not essential names. And he explains. The shame Adam, the name Adam, who shame ho etzem, it refers to the essence, the seichel, referring to the essence as it's associated with one's intellect. So when you say Isser, the name Adam, you're referring to a man's intellect. The shame Ish, Avram, the name Ish, who shame ho etzem, shame ho etzem el hamidus. It's the name of the Midos, the essence of the Midos. It's not the essence of man, it's the essence of a man's character, man's emotions. The 
We know that a healthy character, healthy emotions flow from intellect. In other words, when a person understands something properly, then the middos, the character, the emotions are fine. Or midos shall be asecho, midos that are based on logic and intellect, and midos enushios, they are called human, human emotions, shehem memailas hamedaber, which are then incorporated in the virtue of man. In other words, unbridled midos without any intellectual, logical, rational guidance are not healthy and not considered a virtue for man. So when we talk about Ish, right, the name Ish, like Isra said, Ish Yehudi, but when we're talking about Ish, we're talking about a healthy Mida, a healthy emotion, which follows Adam, which is a healthy mind. And that's why the Rebbe says we'll put them in one category. So Adam and Ish are the two names of the human being, of the person which are on the healthy um, scale. This is, following the pattern, this is following the pattern of the spheres where you have the intellectual, the Chabad, and then you have the lower emotional. Yes, it's a yes and no. I, 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 I would say yes generally, but no, not specifically. In other words, if you mean that it's following the healthy Chabad over Midos, you know, guiding Midos, yes. But here he's, he's lumping together emotion, healthy emotions and healthy intellect on one side. Avram, the Rebbe says, this is the advantage that the emotions of, of, of the human species has over is, is greater than the emotions of animals. The Bali Chayim, animals, Heim Gamkim, Bali Midos, they are also, they have Midos. Va'adarab, on the contrary, ha'bali chayim heim bali midos be'etzam ohusam. Animals, in their very core essence, are bali midos, right? Very emotional. They're running and jumping and, 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 and roaring. Animals are by nature, in a way, animalistic, uh, midos, emotional. Hanesher, and the Rebbe gives an example, Hanesher, the Orev, the, uh, what's the Nesher again? Is yes, there? Uh, eagle. eagle. The Eagle. The Eagle is merciful. And the Raven, right, Orev I think is a Raven, Achzari is cruel. In other words, if you study and you know the tendency of these birds, you'll see this. Avalim said, nevertheless, he named me this, Abalechayim, maybe me this, Tivim. The, 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 the emotions of the animals are natural. The tivium. They're, 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 by, they're natural. They're not, they're not, um, imposed. That's what animals are. The nature of animals is midos, is emotions. The Yeshlem Seichel Gamkem, they also have as a subordinate issue intellect. In other words, well, what do we call this? What do we call the intellect of of an animal? What's the other word for it, Isra? Avram, do you have any thoughts? Instincts. What? Instincts? Yes. Yes. The, that's right. That's the word I was looking for. In in addition to the fact that the that the the the, the seichel, the logical in part that's there in the animal, is associated to their emotions and their nature in levadzo. Additionally, hare sichlam hu das hanikne. 
their logic is what we call acquired logic. In other words, they're guided by nature. And in order to justify the nature, they have some form of in instincts, intellect, rationa rationale. But it's all coming as a justification to their very natural self, which is emotional, emotional. Ukamesh Kosov, he quotes the verse that we say, we, it's the Tanakh, we say it in the Aftaira, I believe in Parshas uh, Nu, Shabbos Chazoin, uh, uh, when the Navi, the prophet, scolds the Jew, scolds the Yidden to do tshuva before Yom Tisha B'av, etc. We read it. Yoda Shoyer Koneu, the ox knows his master. Avas the chamoyer and the donkey knows Avas Beolov, the the um, the place that what is it called the the, tr the trough the trough of its master. It finds itself there. What? What is oh, okay, right. In other words, what type of Yoda? An ox knows its master. What type of knowledge is that? Is it knowledge from a Maimer or from a piece of Gemara? No. It's an instinctual knowledge. You give me food, I look at you, I behave, I smile. You don't give me food, I bite you. So we write the famous fable with the cat and the mouse. Train me to be a cat. Train me to be able to deliver the plate of food. The cat goes to the, to the waiter. I want to deliver food. I'll train you. He trains the cat. The cat comes into the room. A mice comes along. A mouse comes along and runs. And the cat drops the food. But I thought you were trained until I saw a mouse. Why? Because Velvel, by by nature, the mouse, the, the the cat is an animal. An animal's mythos. A man a, 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 an animal's comfort zone is emotions. So as soon as something disturbs its emotions, it kicks back to its 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 natural self with emotions. So you could teach you from the day to tomorrow when the mouse comes into the room and I'm scared, I drop the food. That's that's the way the Rebbe is explaining it. That's what he says when it's when 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 the prophet says Yoda Shoir Koneyu, right? Even the ox knows its master, right? That's part of right. He's saying it, when it says the. Even the the, the the ox knows its master, that knowledge is a subordinate knowledge. It's not the essence of an ox. Continuing. The knowledge and recognition that animals have, it's only from the perspective of their nature. Why is that? Because since they are Raktivian, that's who they are, natural beings, emotional beings. What time is it now? What's the time? Hello? 3.15. Okay, yeah, I'm going to stop now, and um, I'm going to try Monday to go give the shear from another location, because, the, um, you know, we're having too much freezing issues. So, Hevra, it's a special day, because we're alive, and we're breathing, and we're learning. Hashem should help, that everyone should have only Psuras Toivas, and have a great Shabbos, and we'll see everyone Monday. Zaygazut, bye-bye. Take it a chance. Bye.